Hello and welcome to the R Free Quick Start video. My name is Paul and I work at the Prometheus Radio Project where I'm primarily the developer of R Free. This is a quick start so I'm going to be glossing over a lot of technical and legal details. You're going to need to know more about those if you're going to apply for a low power FM radio station. I advise you to go check out the radio site prometheusradio.org where you can click on the start a station button or the start a station menu and you can find also lots of good things under station support for operational and tech support. The other place you're going to need to know about is radiospark.org. That is our networking site for people starting low power FM radio stations and the people that can help them. So when you go there you'll find all sorts of resources available and connections, potential connections with engineers and other applicants and uh, that's generally a good site. Let's go there. The reason this is important is because RFree shares login information with Radiospark.org. So here we are. I'm already logged in as Paul Bain. If you don't have an account, you'll have to go through an account creation process. It's like all of them. They're never perfect. Um, but once you get through it, um, you'll be done. And when you're at Radiospark, you can see, you can find resources, ask questions, all kinds of things like that. We're going to go directly to use RFree. Now RFree does share login information, but you're going to have to log in. And in most cases, it's just going to ask you if you want to let radiospark.org log you in. I've already said yes, so this is going to log me straight in. And when we get there, if you've never used RFree before, you're not going to get this page. You're going to get this page. So most people will start out here. RFree is all about letting you know if you could apply for an LPFM radio station at a certain location. That's what it does. It checks the FCC regulations and all that sort of stuff to see if you could apply. So the first thing we need to do is give it a location. Actually the first thing I'm going to do is change the name from this generic name to Quick Start. And then I'm going to give a location. I'm interested in whether I could put a radio station in Farmington, New Mexico. So I'm going to click on the magnifying glass. I could also say share my current location if I had a GPS enabled device, for example. And once the map is positioned where I want it, let's just say that's close enough for now. I'm going to check this location. Now, our free is going to make a lot of calculations in the background and it's going to come and tell me which frequencies might be available at this location. That blue circle you saw is the estimated coverage area in flat terrain for a low power FM radio station. And here we are back. We get this table. It has frequencies, what they actually are in the numerical form, and how far from your antenna the signal will be its clearest. And luckily it says we have green check mark 2 definitely available frequencies here. If we want to know what definitely available are, and probably you're more interested in what may be available might mean, you can click on these little question marks and you'll get a pop-up help. So I'm pretty encouraged. There are two definitely available potential frequencies in Farmington. But I know that this is not the location that I'm actually going to put the antenna. It's not precise enough yet. So I'm going to go change the location. I'm going to use the map. Here we are back to where we were. and I can do this in a couple of ways. I could zoom in and move the marker around, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting it at the public library. And luckily, Google geocoding is pretty good about some of these things, so I reposition to the library and let's go zoom in and see how good, how close is it. Ah, well that's pretty good. There's the Farmington Public Library. Um, for some reason I want to put it on the west side. I'm going to build a little 30-foot tower on top, I think. And so I'm going to put it over there and check that location. And it's doing the same check that it did before. It'll tell us if there are any frequencies available at this location. Now it's pretty close by, so it's likely to be a similar situation as before. And it is a similar situation, but not identical situation. But still, we have one with the green check mark. It's definitely available. The frequency is 103.5. It's got a clearest signal for 7.1 kilometers. That's a really good distance. That'll easily cover Farmington. 
Um, and so now I want to go look at this frequency in more detail. In case you forget the order of these things at the top, it says one, change the location, two, change the frequency or choose a frequency, three, we're going to go look at the elevation and height. We'll do that in a minute and we'll go through these, finish these steps in a minute. So now we're going to look in more detail at 103.5 and you see here there's lots of things you could read and I advise you to read them, but for a quick start we're not going to. Here are the three stations that are closest um, to causing any kind of a problem to being too close according to the FCC. These are all far enough away. That's why these are green. There's the green check mark at the top. We are good to go. So now let's choose this frequency or select it. Now you could do that in the yellow box or you can do it from this menu at the top. I'm going to do it with the menu at the top. This means that R3 is going to remember 103.5 megahertz is the choice that we made and it's going to make a few extra things available. So while we wait for it to check that, um, it came back and it gave us the same outcome so we're good to go. Now let's go over to number three, the elevation and height. Again, there's a lot of interesting things to read on this page. We're not going to read them. At the bottom is this table of antenna height and the approximate power you get at that height. We're going to skip that for a minute and say, okay, the ground level elevation, Arfrey looked it up and thinks it's 1,652 meters. Now, you might want to verify that, but Arfrey usually gets it right. Um, but before you file your application, double check that. And the antenna height above ground level that R3 chose is 102 meters. Now that's chosen for a very good reason, which I'm not going to get into in the quick start. You can read more about it in the table below. But I know that's not going to happen. I'm going to put a 30-foot tower on top of the library, and I measured it, and that's going to put the antenna at 12 meters. So I'm going to put a 12 in that box. When I scroll down here, you'll see that the 12 is now in this table showing your antenna height. I'm going to save this and let R3 figure out, is this still a good situation? And it probably will be. We just lowered our antenna. We didn't move it. Everything should be fine. And it is. 103.5 is still green, 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 green. You may have noticed over here that the blue circle, it was kind of a blue splash, um, has, has reduced in size. That's because when you make an antenna lower, the coverage is generally reduced. But Farmington is not that big of a place and the center of town is relatively flat so this is probably still a very very good uh, transmitter location and will provide really good coverage to the people that I want to cover in Farmington. Now, now that we have the elevation and height done we need to look at some review items. Let's go look at the overview. This almost never has anything on there that you're going to be interested in but it's something you ought to check. In this case there's nothing on this page to worry about. So let's go look at the coverage map. This is just a big version of that thing you were seeing on the left. Um, you shouldn't trust this to be absolutely precise. This is an inexact science. There's a lot of interesting terrain around Farmington which could make this signal go further or not so far. Um, so a little local knowledge is a good thing too. And now we're going to go to the final step which is looking at the Form 318 tech box. When you file your application with the FCC, the form you file online is called the 318. One of the sections in that form is the tech box, or Section 6, and R3 gives you an image of what it ought to look like based on the information that you've put in and information that R3 has added. So you'll notice that we're looking at 103.5 megahertz, but on the tech box you use the channel number and that's an FCC thing and it happens to be channel 278. If you use R3 you don't have to figure that stuff out. Mostly you'll look at this and cut and paste these things into the form on the FCC site that looks just like this one. There are a few things that R3 does not help you with on here. The overall tower height for example. Are you going to have to register your tower with the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration as a as a, something that they would be interested in, but mostly this will fill things out, especially for green checkmark channels and frequencies like the one for this application. So you would basically copy these things, including which buttons are checked here. There's a good bit of online help on this page, and uh, assuming that everything is fine, and for this situation it does look like everything is fine, 
um, you could put in your application. The technical part is complete. And I'd like to thank you again for being with me for the R Free Quick Start video. I hope to be doing some other videos and maybe I'll hear from you again. For now, I'm Paul. I work at the Prometheus Radio Project. I work on this software, R Free, and if you are a low power FM radio station applicant, best of luck.